Trump loses, and it's not even close. I'm Scott Ott, and this is Bill Whittle now. And Bill, there is a column in TalkingPointsMemo.com by Josh Marshall exploring the possibility that everybody right now is wrong and that incumbent President Donald Trump would actually lose the 2020 election. Now, he's not uh, naming a particular favorite candidate who's going to beat Trump. He's just listing some possibilities that might affect President Trump's opportunity to get reelected. And I'd like to go over a couple of those uh, with you here. First of all, Bill, um, the number one thing that he cites, and again, in fairness to Josh Marshall, he's not saying this will happen. He's mm -hmm. just saying that this is a scenario that is not entirely implausible. Okay. Uh, number one is that President Trump is one of the most consistently unpopular presidents when it comes to popularity polling in American history, and that's got to be a drag. I don't know if that's true, is it? Well, he, he I mean, cites I, I the keep, numbers. Well, I keep seeing uh, polls that show that Trump was, uh, uh, you know, I mean, he's like a 48, 49 percent. That's significantly above what Obama was, and um, he was as popular as heck as he destroyed the country. He destroyed the country with enormous <laughs> popularity. Um, so I'm not entirely sure I, I buy that, but if that happens to be the case, that's... If that happens to be the, the case, then then the question then becomes, what are the popularity numbers of the person running against him? And since we're not um, positing anybody running against him, uh, then um, I don't know that that really makes a whole lot of sense. If he says his approval numbers are low, I don't see it. I see his poll numbers seem to be pretty solid. They're not above 50 percent, but they're not far below it either. And certainly... Without question, there are large numbers of people who either didn't vote for him or voted for him with a great deal of trepidation or sat it out, who are now convinced the Supreme Court justice in the economy, blah, 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 you get the idea. Well, what, what Marshall is saying here is that the president has not had a net positive approval rating his entire presidency, and his approval ratings have generally been in the low 40s, sometimes dipping into the 30s. But even more importantly, he brings up the fact that a very uh, that a that a majority of people consistently say that they definitely will not vote for President Trump uh, for re-election. Uh, 54 well, percent in one poll, 57 in a Marist poll earlier this year. I can, cons I can say with all honesty that I will definitely not be voting for any one of the 25 Democratic uh, candidates that, that are going to be running. I mean, to say, that, to say that before the Democratic nominee, forget the nominee, before the final four is even announced, that I will not be voting for Trump under any circumstances. Against who? Against Hitler? You wouldn't vote for Trump over Hitler? Is that what you're saying? We don't know who the... So, so the whole thing is, again, Scotty, it just seems pointless to me, but I'm, I'm listening. I'm looking. Well, I think they're saying anybody but Trump, basically, and I don't think anybody envisions a Hitler rising on the horizon. Well, we had pretty close in 2016, if you just take out all of the millions of dead people. Um, but with with all seriousness, uh, the Donald Trump, uh, uh, the Donald Trump win in, in 2016, it seems to me, was was uh, uh, produced not not just because certain people like Donald Trump, but because a large number of people just couldn't bear the thought of Hillary Clinton and were ready to roll the dice. And also, and the it, dice roll turned out pretty well. It's because the Trump campaign had a serious electoral college strategy that apparently the Clinton campaign lacked. Um, and this time around, things don't look so good in some very important states like Pennsylvania and Michigan, although there hasn't been a lot of polling in Wisconsin. Apparently, uh, Josh Marshall in Talking Points Memo says that uh, Trump is down by somewhere around uh, 10 points in Pennsylvania against Biden and Bernie Sanders. And okay. Michigan looks about the same. So if he loses Pennsylvania and Michigan um, and Wisconsin, he's almost certainly done, according to Josh Marshall. How much was he down on the night that he won? I am not that good at the polls to be able to answer that question. Yeah, I mean, either. It was at least four or five points, I would say, wasn't it? But they're talking at this point already, you know, he's down by 10 Scott, points that, against essentially uh, placeholder candidates. Yeah, but the, see, the, 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 that's one of my points is that a placeholder candidate has no warts and has uh, a placeholder candidate can be the, the person of your imagination. If somebody said to me, uh, would you rather vote for Donald Trump or an unnamed candidate at this time? I would say that's a question that I can't answer. That would depend an awful lot on the candidate. You know, um, if uh, 
if uh, Thomas Sowell or or um, or Condi Rice or 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 anybody who I respect a lot as a as a you know a, as a person of principle in conservative values ran against Donald Trump, I'd give it serious thought. The reason I'm the reason I'm 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 kind of swatting these arguments away is not because I don't take them seriously. It's just because I don't think they're serious arguments. You can't you can't say that he's down ten points to somebody who hasn't been named. It's just ridiculous. Well, I guess what Marshall's point would be here, and again, Marshall doesn't say he thinks this is going to happen. He just says we've got to consider the possibility. Um, and and then, frankly, he ends the article by saying, now ignore any possibility that the president uh, is in jeopardy and get out there and campaign as if he were a sure thing because you want to be able, you know, he, he doesn't want his own side to get lax. Um, um, I would simply, to this, I would simply say um, this entire article is predicated on one thing. And that one thing is, is it possible Donald Trump will lose in 2020? The answer is yes. Um, but the but the evidence that he's citing is not really evidence of any kind. If you want to know what concerns me about, about 2020 and 2024, it's the demographics. That is something that we should be very, very concerned about. Um, but if he's unless he's making a demographic argument, unless he's saying there are now this many million uh, millennial Trump supporters and this many fewer uh, Trump supporters who supported him in 2016, that's the only argument that I think is making sense because uh, I, I don't think there's any question that his that his popularity among the people that elected him last time has gone up and has won. Uh, want some popularity and some support from people that didn't support him before. I don't know a single Donald Trump supporter who says they're disappointed, but I know a lot of not uh, never Trumpers who are saying, yeah, could have been th that was uh, I'm glad he won. Well, Josh Marshall doesn't call this a demographic argument, but in effect it is because he, he points out a Quinnipiac poll uh, out this week that shows that Joe Biden beats President Trump by four points in Texas. And we okay. know how all right. close that's things all, got that's in the that's senatorial all race. That's all we need. With, that's all we need Beto to know. O'Rourke. That's all we need to know. Right? If he's if, if a guy comes to you with evidence that says that Donald Trump is 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 it's entirely possible that he will lose the national election because Joe Biden is beating him by four points in Texas, now you got that's not that's not even the pseudoscience of political science. Well, demographics, as you pointed out, are changing rapidly in Texas. Texas is uh, getting a huge influx from people all over the country, but yeah, specifically, spe yes, specifically from your sending state of California, um, she as said well we as a on it. as well as a lot of immigrants. We have a large border uh, to the south, and so we're getting a lot of uh, immigrants coming from there, as well as from elsewhere in the country. There's a lot of work here. There's a lot of manual labor to be done here. And so we have a lot of uh, people at the lower end of the economic scale, and frankly, a lot of people from the Democratic base moving in just a couple of years after Beto O'Rourke got within three points of Ted Cruz in a Senate race. Beto O'Rourke got within three points of Ted Cruz in a Senate race because Beto O'Rourke was the focal point for the entire Democratic, Democratic Party machine. Um, in, in that election. I mean, it was that was the only race that was there as far as they were concerned. And it, and I find it interesting that, um, as we discussed earlier uh, today, um, Beto is now at 2% or something nationally. So basically what that said, in fact, that's a perfect example. Beto's at 2% now nationally because people have gotten to see a little bit of Beto. And the more people see of him, the lower his numbers get. So again, to say that uh, that Biden beats Trump in Texas is, I, I come back to this because it's a useful analogy. It's like the Drake equation, which was a uh, an astronomer, uh, I think it was Frank Drake, basically said, in order to determine the number of intelligent uh, civilizations in the universe, here's what you need. Number of stars, number of stars with habitable planets, number of habitable planets to develop life, number of life planets that develop uh, technology, on and on and on and on and on. And it looked very scientific. And when he produced it, you, you would look at this and you go, wow. That's a tremendous tool. What a tremendous tool. Now we have an actual tool. These are the steps that it would take in order to get to an intelligence, extraterrestrial intelligence that we could communicate with. And it gives you the illusion of science. But the point about the Drake equation that did not occur to me until 20, 30 years after I heard it and was enamored with it was that none of the variables are known. None are known. I've got an equation with, what is it, seven, eight variables in it? And we don't know the value of any of them? None? 
That's what, what good does that do? It does no good at all, none. It gives you the illusion of science without any science behind it. Well, um, to be fair to Josh Marshall, up front in the article, he says, and I quote, um, Trump has big advantages in the Electoral College. Incumbents usually get reelected. And let's be frank, he already did once what many of us thought was all but impossible. Bill, Correct. what do you make of the fact that uh, a guy who's a relatively prominent writer on the left um, felt motivated to do this. Is it just, you know, an opportunity to get some uh, clickbait hits? Yeah. Or do you think he sees his party needing something at this crucial moment in time uh, that it's not getting elsewhere? I'm going with B on this one. Uh, I think he's writing an article like that because most of his friends have come to the same conclusion that I've come to lately. Look, let's, let's just maintain a footing in reality here. Uh, there are any number of things that can happen between now and the election. And some of these things can happen the night before the election. Some of them can happen on the day of the election, technically speaking, right? So to say that he's got a lock on it is, you know, I, I used to, for some reason, it used to annoy my friends when, when my Florida Gators were up by three or four touchdowns in the fourth quarter. And I would say, God himself cannot take this game away from us. <laughs> uh, so, um, so don't because he can and he has. Uh, but with that said, um, I think he's writing the article because all of the indications seem to me, despite what he's saying, to point to a pretty heavy uh, Trump win. Donald Trump as president has gained significantly in um, African-American, especially African-American males, largely because of Kanye West giving him permission. Um, and as I say, there are a number of people on the, on the Republican side of the ticket who simply didn't vote for him at all. I think most of those people have come to realize that despite what they may think about him personally, his achievements speak for themselves. The economic growth, the, 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 all of it. I mean, it just takes, it's actually too long to list again, which we keep doing. So I see him gaining a lot of votes that he didn't have before. And as far as these states of Wisconsin and Pennsylvania go, Joe Biden may be able to say, hey, how's it going? And have a, you know, and have a flapjack with some, with some uh, guys in the morning before they go to work, that's fine. But Donald Trump has increased their paychecks and increased the number of people who are getting paychecks. And I don't think that's something that's going to just brush off and, 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 you know, and, and just pretend to be there. Whoever that front runner is for the Democrats, not only is Donald Trump stronger, but whoever that front runner is, they will not carry the And the reason they won't carry the momentum is because we don't know who that person is. This is a self-affirming argument. Okay. If we don't know who the, who the Democratic nominee is going to be a year before the election, then certainly whoever that person is, is not going to come in with the momentum that Hillary Clinton came in with. Hillary Clinton came in with 30 years of momentum, you know? And when I say momentum, I mean the whole narrative. It's time for a woman president. It's time for a woman president. It's time for a woman president. We may get a woman nominee. That's fine. But, but that is not the same kind of irresistible force that that Hillary Clinton uh, appeared to be bringing in 2016, and she got beaten. Um, I, I think he's much stronger, and I think the potential field of opponents is much weaker. We'll see. Well, we will see. In five days a week, we'll be bringing Bill's analysis to you on Bill Whittle Now. Thanks to the members at BillWhittle.com who make it all possible. It seems like a long slog between now and November 2020, but it'll be upon us before we know it. So I know you'll want to stay tuned in and uh, to be able to find the kinds of ways to express your views that are effective and winning with people around you. Uh, we think that's one of the services we provide there. I know we hear that from our members. If you'd like to join that membership, you can do so by going to BillWhittle.com and clicking that Become a Member link. So for Bill Whittle, I'm Scott Ott. Thanks to the members for making this possible.